So now we have the uh, we have the system that gives us the solution of our model either with representative agent or heterogeneous agent. So we said that uh, the model solution was just given by a two by two system. So output is always on the aggregate supply curve and tightness is implicitly given by the equality of the aggregate demand aggregate supply. So now the question is, how does that look um, graphically? Um, well, the Um, to plot that, we've got to, uh, so we'll just um, use a very simple diagram. So we'll have uh, we put tightness here, and then we'll put output. Here, um, you know, we know that output <coughs> is never bigger than K. Total capacity, the aggregate capacity in the economy. So I can just put K here, I have my zero here. Um, put X tightness on the vertical axis, you know, following the Marshallian tradition. Um, Okay, so how do I plot this? So the aggregate supply, we know uh, aggregate supply curve as a function of tightness and increasing concave function of tightness. So here, because X is on the vertical axis, my aggregate supply is going to look something like this. This is Ys of X, which is just F of X times K. Okay, so here I'm just trying to figure out um, how I can solve the model graphically. And so, you know, so we know that output will always be on the supply. So here I have my uh, aggregate supply curve. Um, so I know that I can always read output out of it. But then the key thing is that um, tightness is implicitly given by the equality of aggregate supply aggregate demand. So to be able to figure where my tightness is, I've got to put to plot my aggregate demand curve. Now, in general, of course, um, the aggregate demand curve, we don't know exactly how it looks because we need to make assumptions on the pricing norm. Because the aggregate demand curve, you remember, uh, although here I didn't put it, but I should have, the aggregate demand also depends on the price level. Um, but so for now, you know, just to simplify things, uh, let's assume that P is just fixed, it's just a parameter of the model. Um, in a case like this, where P doesn't move, we know that the aggregate demand is strictly decreasing in tightness, so we'll get something like this. And that's because um, Yd of X and P is actually <coughs> epsilon, which is fixed, 1 plus tau X, epsilon minus 1. U over P, where here I took P fixed. Um, here, so tau X is increasing in tightness, epsilon minus one is positive, so YD of X is strictly decreasing. And so if I want to find, to solve my model, uh, I have my aggregate supply, my aggregate demand, I know that the tightness that solves the model, uh, we're going to be able to find it <coughs> uh, here. So we know that it's going to be here. X and here's the output Y. So this would be the solution. Uh, this is the solution of the model. <clears throat> but it's important to understand a bit, uh, you know, like what this curve means and what it means to solve the model like this. You know, you can't really. Um, 
tell a story whereby you have this aggregate demand, this aggregate supply, and somehow tightness adjusts, you know, to equilibrate the two. Like it's not really how it works here. Um, so you can't really tell that Valrasian story, you know, where you have supply demand, and the price adjusts, and even the Valrasian story is kind of misleading because. Um, so Valrasian model doesn't tell us at all how the price is supposed to adjust so that supply is equal to demand. Um, if you had an auctioneer, then the auctioneer would have supply in hand, demand in hand, and set the price so that supply is equal to demand. Um, most markets don't have auctioneers, and so usually people tell stories about how the price would adjust, but that's not part of the model. These are just stories, and that, that's a bit uh, misleading. Um, but in any case, yeah, that's not what's happening. What's happening is that for all the elements of the model to be satisfied, tightness has to be given, uh, has to be at the intersection of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And so what does this aggregate supply here do? So the aggregate supply here captures uh, the capacity of the economy, which is K, plus the matching process. And so for any tightness that's realized, you're always on this aggregate supply. That's why we said earlier that output here uh, is given by uh, by the aggregate supply. That's always true, you know, through the matching process. So you're always moving on the aggregate supply. So as a function of where the tightness is realized, you may be here, you may be here, maybe here, maybe here. Okay. So uh, this is something that's always true. So you're always on it. You're moving on this. So here, you're at this point here. So our output is going to be uh, this. So the aggregate supply here captures the capacity of the economy, so really the supply side and the matching process. What does the aggregate demand? <coughs> so when we are also when we are at the intersection of supply and demand, what does that capture? Well, this <coughs> aggregate demand in the sense captures the fact that uh, households, uh, oops, sorry. it captures. Uh, the aggregate demand captures the fact that households uh, maximize their utility given their budget constraint. So it captured uh, household uh, utility maximization. Um, but of course, you know, the key thing here is we have a static model, households they have to make their decision about how much they want to purchase and how many vacancies. You know, tightness is the aggregate amount of vacancies divided by the capacity. But of course, when people decide how many, vac how many vacancies or how many visits they want to do, uh, they've got to anticipate some level of tightness because they anticipate some level of tightness. They maximize their utility given that level of tightness. And then they, they decide how many visits they send people out to do visits based on that anticipated amount of tightness. And then given everybody, how many people are out for visit from all households, you have a tightness that's actually realized. So you see that there is an, that the household has to anticipate some tightness, make decisions, that, and then the tightness, the aggregate tightness will be realized. Um, so given that households have to anticipate the amount of tightness that will prevent to make their decision, um, this aggregate demand curve really uh, takes, you know, when we read the aggregate demand, really what it's saying is that the eggs that we have on the vertical ax uh, axis for the uh, purpose of reading the aggregate demand curve is not a realized uh, tightness, but it's the anticip anticipated tightness. So, so the, this aggregate demand curve says that for uh, a certain tightness that's anticipated here. Here is the, and given that households maximize their utility, here is the aggregate demand curve uh, that's going to come uh, to come out of it. And so, uh, and at the, at the solution of the model, which is uh, what we have here, the amount that uh, demanded for an anticipated tightness is exactly the same as the amount that's going to prevail, you know, when the, for the same, when the tightness that's anticipated is also realized. And so in a case like this, you have your solution of your model because um, basically people anticipated the correct tightness, they posted a certain number of vacancies and, and or they, they realized the number of visits to shops 
And for this number of visits, through the matching process, given the supply, the number of matches that are made is exactly what uh, households wanted. So at the solution of the model, uh, the, you know, the, the tightness is such that the amount that's traded given the matching process is, uh, is equal to uh, the amount of services that maximize uh, utility given you you know what given that the tightness is correctly anticipated by the household so as a solution the matching process is respected of course that's always the case but furthermore uh, Utility maximization is respected as well. Um, 